Hey everyone, it's the Eclectic Handyman here today talking about how we can build our own coolant or heater hose using different and various parts. Let's get into it. All right, we're going to start off here on the old GT500 at the car and figure out exactly why I'm in this situation. So what happened was I got these Shelby replacement tanks for the radiator and the supercharger, their coolant tanks. And the original one was kind of over in this position. So this return line or overfill coolant line right here was a bit longer and then came to a nipple coming out of the original tank right about this location. So it's well known that you have to cut the original hose to install the new one. Well, you know the old saying, measure 300 times, cut once. And of course, I didn't do it right. I've got an extra clamp on there, but essentially what ended up happening is I cut it too short. And what I was really trying to do was with the extra piece of hose, I was trying to recycle it and actually use it for something else because this hose is in great condition. And I just miscalculated by a little bit. So I figured, no problem, small hose, three quarter inch hose inside diameter. Let me go figure out from Ford and get a replacement. Well, it turns out this is pretty much discontinued and it's very, very expensive. I didn't end up acquiring it. We'll look at it over on the workbench. But essentially, what I need to do is get this hose to be just a little bit longer. So let's go see what we've got. All right, back over here at the workbench, I've assembled some parts that I'm going to be able to use to get the hose back in the condition that I want it to. Now, let me first start off by saying I did acquire one of those OEM Ford hoses. I got it right here. This was very difficult to find. There was only one place that actually had it, and it was a very expensive mistake. This one three-quarter inch inside diameter, about a foot long hose was $140. I know, absolutely awful. I am actually not going to cut it right about here and use this hose. Because of the nature of this hose and because of that being a GT500 KR, what I'm going to do here is the original uh, coolant bottle and this is where it attaches to. So for originality, and it actually goes right here, I'm going to go ahead and keep this hose in its original shape and put it with my old parts. So that way, if the car ever needs to be returned to stock, I have the stock hose and the stock bottle. So let me put those to the side. What I want to do is go ahead and take that hose off the car, and then I'm going to use these parts right here to make it look like this hose. So what I have right now is my original hose goes to right about here. And again, I don't want to cut this one. So now I've got these other parts. So what are my options in order to replace the hose? Well, first of all, we already talked about get a hose that's the actual hose for the car. And hopefully it's not too expensive. That's option one. Option two, you find out it's discontinued. You find out it's hard to get like mine or just too expensive and you don't want to do it. The next thing you can do is take whatever part of the existing hose, even if it's all tore up and that's why you're replacing it because it got all chewed up, maybe from the clamps, take it to the auto parts store. First thing you're going to want to do is measure the inside diameter. I happen to know this is three quarters inch. You can take this to your auto parts store and just say, hey, do you mind taking this over to where all the coolant and heater hoses are? Hold it up. If you have anything that's even slightly uh, similar with these molded bins in it, I want to go ahead and, and maybe buy that. If it's a little bit longer, if it has an extra bin, no problem. We can always cut whatever hose they give us to look like this hose right here. But in my case, I took it to the auto parts store. They had something very similar, but the problem was the inside diameter did not match. It was actually for a Chevy. And so I wasn't able to do that. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a three quarter inch hose, a one inch hose, a two inch hose. This process will hold for everything. So again, option one, get the original hose. Option two, take this hose to the auto parts store, try to match as close as possible, and then maybe cut it if needed. Now next, what we can do is, so you might say, why don't you just get a piece of straight hose and use that? Well, this is a piece of straight hose. It just cost a couple of dollars. It is a inside diameter three quarter inch, 
But the problem is, is that a mold, a true molded bend right here, uh, does not work the same on a straight hose. If you try to bend the hose, what will happen is, as you can see, it will kink. So these, these bends and the molding that happens during processing with the extra material to make that is absolutely not the same as taking a straight hose. Now, it's true that you can take a straight hose and do a gentle, gentle bend in it, but you cannot do anything drastic. So I do have this piece of straight hose if I need it, because if you're reassembling this hose, maybe you do need a straight section. So the last step is, and I learned a lot during this process because at first, again, I wasn't in full and freak out mode, but uh, when I found out this hose was as expensive as it was, I was pretty unhappy about that. I did get it, but what you can do and what I've come to find out is you can just build a hose. It's not that difficult to do. Now, in the same respect, I went to Amazon and I basically put in three quarter inch molded hose. That's all my search came up with and all kinds of hoses came up. In fact, some that even looked a little bit like this, but a, a quite a bit longer. And again, I could have just cut it off. Now that hose, I think uh, I looked at a couple that were in the uh, maybe $20 to $30 range. So again, way better than what I paid for this hose. But look at what I got here. Straight piece, about $2.50 from the local auto parts store. Gates, the company Gates, they make a whole bunch, Gates and Dorman. So what I did was when I put in three quarter inch molded hose, they have all different types of bends. We've got this one right here, which is absolutely perfect. I've got straight hose. They have other ones. They have uh, 90 degree bends uh, if you need it, uh, holes. So these pieces are only a few dollars a piece. So just between these two, I think I'm at less than $10. And then what you do is you can get these heater hose connectors. And this one I really like. This actually happens to be billet. It's, um, it costs a few dollars more. But essentially what we can do here is this is three quarters inch. You got to get the right one. So it'll go in like this. And then when you have the other side, you know, it would go, you know, so we could, it would go like this. And then if I needed this piece and this, it would go here and then you could clamp it down on both sides. I also, I'm not going to end up needing this one, but I got a 90. And again, Dorman, this, I, I really preferred this, this better one that was made out of, uh, uh, I believe this is aluminum here, but this one right here, they have a whole series of these that you can find at the local auto parts store. I did get this off of Amazon. Here's a 90. They had three quarter to three quarter like this. They have ones that go five eighths to three quarters, whatever you need. It's like a big puzzle and you can put all these things together. So if you take a look now that I've got the template of the hose, check this out. So if I use this piece right here, you could see that just with this piece, I could use this and then I could cut it here. And then if I had another one, the bend is about perfect. I could, you know, cut it where it joined with the first piece. And then I could do it again and then cut it here. So I would have a few different pieces. So with essentially in my particular case, three of these, which is probably less than $15, I could build this hose. Um, maybe twenty dollars because I'd have to get a couple of these connectors. Although if I use the plastic, it would be even cheaper. So in my case, I'm not going to go full on and build one from scratch. I'm going to take the original one off the car. I'm going to use what's existing in it, and then add in the parts and pieces that I need. And I've got everything that I need. Again, my situation is pretty simplistic. Yours might be a hose with many more bends, so you're going to have to play detective even a little bit more. You're going to have to search and find different pieces or hoses that are similar. But rest assured, there's nothing really special about these hoses at the end of the day. You're paying a lot more to get the original one, but especially if you're on a car that you don't care about the integrity of its original value, you just need a hose. There is no reason that you can't assemble one of these and have all the integrity and save yourself a lot of money. All right, let's get over to the car get the original hose off of it and start using these parts to extend it as I need it. All right, so I got that original hose off the car, the one that's a bit too short, and I can compare it to the original, and you know that we've got basically right to here. So we needed that additional little bit of length here to get onto the overflow nipple off of the supercharger tank. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way and go ahead and get going with our plan. So what I think I wanna do, I don't really wanna just extend this 
with that connector because one of the, one of the problems is it's not going to work. You've got a bend right there. That connector is not going to go in there. So that's not going to work. However, we do have the proper bend that we need. And then if I flip it over, the additional length that we desire here. So what I can do is cut this hose about right here in the middle, then use this hose, making the bend in the same location, but then again, finishing the cut much further down. So I will only need the one connector, two clamps, and then I will cut right about here measuring and I'll use, actually I'll use a marker, and it's good to have like a, a Sharpie. You can, even if you use a dark black one, it's just enough to see the difference in color so you'll know where to cut. Now this time the project gets a lot harder if I cut this hose incorrectly. So what I wanna do is check, check, and recheck. What I'm trying to do is get this bend to be in the same location and maybe even give it you know, a quarter inch extra variance here so that there's even no question about enough length. So what I'm gonna do is just back, I just slid it over just a little bit extra, just a little bit. I don't want it to be too far because then you'll have to bend the hose to actually get it to work. All right. And again, it may be a little bit difficult to see on camera, but I can see that line. And I'm going to cut right on that line right there, and then I should have it perfect. And then as far as this end here, I'm gonna go ahead and wait to attach it before I cut this side so I know exactly how long. All right, to cut this hose, since I don't have an actual tool to cut the hose because I do this almost never, I found another little tip on YouTube you just need to get a sharp knife, and I have my Craftsman knife right here, which is nice, and use some dish soap. And if you, basically, the reason for using the dish soap, according to the hint that I had seen, is that the friction from a dry knife and the hose makes it difficult to cut. So if you go ahead and kind of liberally coat the section that you need, again, making sure you can still see the mark, that you want, then it makes, and you also need to be very careful, very, very careful when you do this. Do not cut your fingers. I, that's why I'm wiping down away from the sharp part of the blade. You need to get that knife, uh, have some soap as well. All right, and then we can go ahead and cut this hose. And I did do this when I did it incorrectly. So I can see my mark right here. It might be a little difficult to see on the camera, but I can see the Sharpie. And again, I wanna give it just a bit of length. So I'm going to cut it right here and away we go. have a piece of cardboard under that so I don't nice all done nice clean cut exactly where I wanted it now I'll be able to tie in my other piece and we'll have the hose as we need it so let's start let's clean this up and start assembling these with the connector all right so now it's time for final assembly by the way the piece of hose that you cut off if it's in great shape don't throw it away. You never know when you're going to need to do something like this again. Just get a little box and save these little pieces. I've got everything I need. Next up, we need to put the connector inside these two pieces of hose. And I'm going to go ahead and use these warm gear style clamps right here and here. And I did seek out black ones because I wanted it to be a little bit more seamless. So I found these on Amazon, these Mishimoto black hose clamps. And the silver would have been fine. Now, these are not like powder coated or anything. You get what you pay for. I mean, it's not like you can go get something super expensive. So can they ding and you'll see a little silver through this? Yes. But overall, they'll slide on. I'll keep this part on the bottom so you won't see it from the top of the car. And essentially, you'll have the piece and then they'll slide in together like that. So let's go ahead and start assembling this. We'll put the hose connector in. We'll just turn it through until it hits flush on that. Very nice. 
Boy, I really like that. That's a good, um, I'll leave the link for this and these in the section below on this video. All right, so now we've got one hose clamp there and I'll go ahead and keep that on the inside there where it tightens down. And now we'll put the other side on. Actually, I'm gonna put the clamp first. See, it's just, a, it's just like putting together Legos or pieces of a puzzle. Slide that one on and look at that. You can barely even see where that connector is in the middle. And honestly, you might say, well, why didn't you just go for the black connector? Then you wouldn't have even seen that little silver rim. Honestly, if I kept pushing on this, it's probably gonna, you know, go all the way. And then you, you really don't see much of anything right there. What you wanna do is get those clamps in the right position. And then before I tighten that down, just to make sure everything is exactly the way I want it, I'm just gonna do an eyeball check to my original hose. And there we go. We basically got, and then the original one started to go off. And remember, I've got one more cut to make right here at the very end. So we're looking good. Let's go ahead and tighten these down. All right, that looks pretty good right there. So now the last thing we need to do is just measure how much to cut off. Again, I don't wanna to cut too much off or I'll be back in the same position I was to begin with, but this one doesn't need any additional hose connector because this end is just gonna go directly into the reservoir. So I'll go measure at the car, make one more cut and I'll be finished. All right, so I went to the car and checked, but I also, in my particular case, could use the original piece and know how much extra I needed. And in this case, right at about the end of the USA here, seems to be about a perfect cut. Again, I can always come back and cut another quarter inch, half inch off. What I can't do and don't wanna do is get too short. So I'll make my line just below here. I did check at the car that's gonna give us that extra length, should be perfect. All right, one more time with the soap and the knife, cut, and we'll be done. Don't forget, put it on both parts. And again, this would be a lot easier if I had the right tool, but I don't, don't do this much, and so this works just fine. Very nice. Got a nice straight edge here. Clean this up and check it out. All right, now I can compare it to the original hose. As you can see here, we've got the additional length that we desired. We only had to make one joint here in the middle with that connector. And for just a few dollars, we were able to make a hose that was needed instead of paying a lot of money for something that's discontinued or hard to find. Now, one my question like, well, what about those clamps and such like that? Well, you're not going to see that. And this hose is pretty far down anyway. Shouldn't be a big deal. I'll retain the original clamp up by the engine because there's another one that matches it just for aesthetics. But anyway, these are just details. I mean, you can use whatever kind of clamp that you want to get the job done. Just again, lessons learned. If you have to cut a hose or an existing hose or you're doing some custom work, make sure you get it cut right. Check beforehand. And also... If you do run into a problem, it's very easy to build a hose from a bunch of different spare parts and individual parts and connectors just as you need it. All right, time to put it on the car and we will be finished. All right, back at the car, all buttoned up, got my connectors back on and there we go. We got the extra hose needed. And it's also nice because this reservoir right here was kind of being tugged on because that hose was too short. Now it looks great. And even from up here, you know, the black down there on the hose, as far as the clamps blend in. And again, in my situation, I could have used the uh, OEM hose and then made a shortcut on it. But because of its rarity, I decided to keep it with the original parts on the car. And this solution worked out just fine. Anyway, Hope this helps you if you get into a bind with a coolant 
or radiator hose that you have to manufacture. And until next time, this is the Eclectic Candyman. We'll see you later.